find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. I'm hungry, spark, but I ain't starving yet. Jane for the pain, cocktail, dollar set. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Pizza for the taste of the pie. Hey guys, it's Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on Twitter. It's the Indie Mayhem Show, episode 70. Uh, coming at you. And uh, also with me on the line, as usual, my co-host down there in Corpus Christi, Texas, normally. He's the commentator for um, Inspire Pro Wrestling. See, I, I got you on the last show, but <laughs> I botched it on this one. Uh, and uh, how you doing down there? I'm doing great, Sorg. I'm sorry. I'm, tr- I'm, trying so, I'm trying so hard not to make wet, wet hot American summer jokes after the last show. <laughs> Listen to the wrestling name show to find out. It got weird. It got a little weird. Um, yeah. But anyways, this, this is the show where we talk indie wrestling and have fun with that. And uh, from uh, you know the fr- our friends in the industry, and uh, we've been doing this for a while, and, and we we love it and want to put it in context and, and and tell you why you guys need to be check out indie wrestling as well. Check out more wrestlingmamshow dot com, including links for subscribing and and commenting <laughs> and, and and everything on this show and joining us on social media. You can tell us what you think and any, any indie the indies that you think uh, we're missing out on. Let us know, and you can join us here live every uh, Tuesday night, 11 p.m. Eastern Time, live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com. You can be part of the chat room, be part of the conversation yourselves. So I'm really excited this week. Uh, we got uh, a guy that I've known for a long time since I've worked with IWC. It's creeping up. I think we're at least eight years in now. Uh, but uh, fab- well, formerly the fabulous John McChesney, Big League John McChesney, joins us today. How you doing, sir? I'm I'm good and I'm I'm a little upset that it's taken me what eight years to be on your show for the first time. To be eight? fair, to be fair, I, I we got you on the old show, didn't we? I, I, I maybe I probably hung up on you. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it, it got weird. It got weird. Um, he got mad at an Xbox or something, and and it, it was awkward. It was awkward. But uh, apologies for not having you earlier on this show. It is more appropriate though. Uh, than what we were doing there. So uh, I, I'm really excited to have a good conversation with you about uh, indie wrestling and, and whatnot. Um, all right. So, so uh, well, first of all, the kind of a get to, get to know you exercise here. Uh, you know, if you're in, if you got into indie wrestling, you got to be a wrestling fan to begin with. Uh, what was kind of your first kind of exposure to pro wrestling in general that kind of got you hooked on this stuff? Uh, in general, probably. When I watched uh, the WrestleMania three, I'm sure you've heard that answer from a lot of different wrestlers. <laughs> but I, I rented I rented the old VHS tape. It was a double tape from Home Video Exchange in McCain, Pennsylvania. Oh wow! It was the first time I, re- I really uh, I, I mean I watched it like a hundred times in three days, probably. You know, I was a young kid. It wasn't you know it was a few years after it already happened, but I, that was my first experience in wrestling, mm-hmm. and my first my first. Live experiences uh, was at the Erie Civic Center here in Erie, Pennsylvania, now called the Erie Insurance Arena. Um, I went to a, ho- a random house show. I saw Undertaker versus Owen Hart. <laughs> it was one of the first matches I ever saw live. Wow. Uh, nice. And then, and that was one of the first matches. Lot. But when you talk about independent wrestling, the first ever independent wrestling that I ever saw was at Ainsworth Baseball Field, where I actually played a lot in high school here in Erie. It was ran by one Norm Connors. Mm-hmm. And it was it was not IWC wrestling. It was Steel City wrestling. And the first ever independent wrestling match I ever watched was Christian York versus Joey Matthews. Oh, wow. Nice. And, yep. And I was in the second or third row. And, I, I, you know, I was, I think I was 16 or 17 years old at the time, sitting on the baseball field that I played baseball at. And I watched that, and I was immediately hooked. And I knew I had to be a part of that. You know, we've we've had interesting so. stories, kind of like that. Like like I, I, we talked with somebody a few weeks ago that uh, they had uh, seen wrestling but weren't impressed. But then they saw that indie show, and they're like, "I gotta be a wrestler." What is it that the, the difference between, like, say, the house show? And, like house shows are still kind of, especially it's a smaller arena. I think up there in Erie, it's still kind of a more intimate experience in comparison. Yeah, but it, yeah. It, it, well, even, no, even in the area, there's a 5,000 seat arena. Oh, okay. And you're still sucked back. Okay. okay. When you're at an independent show, you could be in a little building when there's a thousand people crammed into a 700 seat building. Mm-hmm. That's, that's intimate. That, you know, when it's, when it's over the top in your face, 
and that's what that first indie show was to me. Like, it, it you know, it was, you could just feel the passion and the intensity. And maybe it's just me, you know, or maybe it's just us wrestlers, but you could, you could feel it more than just being a regular wrestling show, I guess you could say. Okay. Okay. So you mentioned you mentioned a pretty uh, uh, decent name there. He's a guy that we've talked on here a while. Of course, uh, Norm Connor is the former owner of uh, IWC here in Pittsburgh. Encon. Uh, Encon <laughs> or Con Air, we refer to as well. When Jamie DeMarco would join us back in the day uh, on, on 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 the Wrestling Mayhem show. Uh, so was that kind of your first? Like, did, did that thread kind of continue on, and that's why we saw you uh, uh, prominently in, in the International Wrestling Cartel here in Pittsburgh? Uh, well, sort of. Um, I mean, I, I saw Norm Connor, I saw Steel City and met Norm Connors through that, but that he's not the one who originally got me into the business originally. Right. Uh, Jamie Scott, Jamie Scott, who runs Pro Wrestling Rampage in Erie, Pennsylvania, um, mm-hmm. who I've known since I was about 15 years old, actually helped Norm Connors back in those days of Steel City bring, bring shows to Erie. And uh, I met Jamie then, and he lived right down the road from me, and we became friends. And he was the one. He ran after he helped Norm. He ran a couple of uh, intense championship wrestling shows up here in Erie. And he, he's the one that uh, actually introduced me to my trainer, J-Rock. So uh, before I worked for Norm, I worked for Jamie here in Erie. Uh, my first couple of shows, my actually third show was down in Pittsburgh for a uh, No Barriers wrestling show. Remember that? No, I well, you got to remember. I only I was only interested in indie, indie wrestling in 2006, but but I got to oh, say oh. my my first exposure was watching you in the Super Indie Tournament in uh, on TV because it was on the cable access or something in the area. Well, that's crazy. I had already been doing it for about three or four. Oh years yeah, oh yeah. I, and I had been <laughs> Pittsburgh since 2000, and so I don't know what the hell I, I didn't get off my ass and find this stuff. So, <laughs> well, that's okay. Hey, you know what though? Once you found it, you fell in love with it. Mm-hmm. Am I mm-hmm. right? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. That's that's what matters. I don't care when you find it, as long as you love it. That's I mean, cool. hell, look at us here. I'm, I'm I'm late on a Tuesday night talking with you up in Erie with a guy from Texas that does doing the same thing, right? I think we got. I think we kind <laughs> found found our groove with this stuff. <laughs> yeah, but. That's funny. That's great. Oh, it, I actually wrestled in Texas last year. That's right. Mm-hmm. Uh, we actually I actually get the pleasure of seeing yeah seeing a wrestle for uh, branded outlaw wrestling down here. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I wrestled for NWA Houston and branded outlaw, which is good. And I and Brand, the last show I did for branded outlaw, I wrestled Dirty Andy Dalton. Mm-hmm. And uh, I wish that uh, one Justin Plummer that runs IWC now would realize uh, what what's going on down in Texas and bring that kid up here. Because he's got some talent that nobody can uh, touch. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'd say that. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe we'll get the hook up and send him some tapes here of Inspire Pro and uh, and uh, see what's going on there. Because I'd love Definitely. to see that connection. We're still trying to get him to uh, bring Eamon up as well. So uh, <laughs> give give Dombrowski <laughs> some help up here. So, uh, but anyways. <laughs> Um, but anyways, but no, you're so your guys, you like I say, what did you say? You were in there six years before I even showed up. Um, and you, yeah, I'd say five years before you even showed up, and then mm-hmm. and then, but I will say that night that you watched me on TV doing Super Indy, Super Indy Four in 2006 was probably the night that really brought me into uh, prominence in, in the independent scene, at least, and and gave me like a, a you know a kick in the ass, as mm-hmm. you could say, of uh, getting my name out there and, and making making wrestling happen right and for those who don't know i mean that, i believe that in the finals was you and loki and at the time like you came yeah. it was kind of like uh who is this 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 skinny kid trying to be a wrestler at the time with yeah, all due respect skinny, at the time skinny curly haired kid skinny curly haired <laughs> kid you're like what is it i mean you see that i mean a lot of i mean even the guys you see in wwe you may saw him 10 years ago and be like that guy's gonna be a wrestler and then you're just amazed at the transformation and uh before i wrestled loki this is my little cheap plug before I wrestled Loki in the finals, I beat CM Punk like two hours earlier. <laughs> <laughs> who? <laughs> CM who? What? What? <laughs> Who's that guy? <laughs> uh, but then, and, and in the middle, I beat Glenn Spector, if you right. remember that guy. Right, right. I, that, who who uh, I knew as the guy who always took on Chris Hero, because he was the Wonder Man yeah. Glenn Spector, and then you had Chris Hero with the Superman shirt. And I'm just like, what? what is this? This is the weirdest thing, you know? And then, well, of course... It was weird. It, it, of course, Chris Hero going on to be Chris Hero, the, or, or yeah. 
uh, for a moment uh, an NXT guy at least uh, and doing great things Absolutely. around Warner. So and, and still doing great things with the uh, even down there in Inspire Pro I know uh, <laughs> recently. So, mm-hmm. um, I mean, that, that's the thing. You're, you're a guy that I've seen uh, in, in a lot of matches with IWC and otherwise um, uh, against some of the, you know, uh, your series low key. Uh, of course, you know, uh, um, that, that match that made you, I think, uh, with Super Indie and really, really elevated you there. Um, where I had my where I had my chest caved in, turned <laughs> purple and bleeding. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if people that maybe you know only know low key for more recent like Kenshi and WWE and 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 uh, uh, TNA now uh, know how serious this guy is. Oh um, uh, no, he's the. I will say this. Uh, no matter what people say, he's the man. Uh, he pushed me to my limits. Made me take what I do a little bit more serious. Uh, because in wrestling, you know, it's, it's entertainment. And, I mean, there's any facet of it from being serious to being goofy to being everything. Mm-hmm. Um, but in the long run, you need to take this seriously uh, no matter what you do, if it's comedy or anything. And he, he by that night, he lit a fire under my butt that, that made me take everything I do serious and really set me on a good path after that because I had a lot of success after that night. So. Mm-hmm. Certainly, certainly. And we're showing a little bit of footage. This is actually a little bit later. You have the Super Indie belt and uh, one of your rematches here you're if you're on footage. video. I can't see you guys. Now. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. Just, I'm letting you know what we're showing. And this is one of these... Uh, uh, yeah, this was actually a court time. One of them after. I'm probably in the crowd for this one because I, I remember a lot of your rematches. I think I saw two of them out here. Uh, but uh, but 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 they're definitely brutal. They say he's one of the real serious guys out there. Um, you know, and, and, and uh, you're one of the guys that um, I, I've noticed this. Uh, you're one of the most well dressed guys in an indie show. Well, yeah, it has to be addressed. That's for success, baby. Why? What else would you? I mean, you know. I like to look good. I like to look good, feel good. Mm-hmm. Like Rick Flair used to get, say, all those, you know. Mm-hmm. I just, I, I grew up uh, dressing nice, and I continue to dress nice. Uh, and there's not, no other way to say it other than dress for success. I mean, I like to look good. I, you know, I have the ability to do that, so mm-hmm. I do it. Do you think that um, do you think that that helps you as far as uh, I don't know how to put this like maybe being taken seriously by promoters about by your colleagues that you that you take it you know your look that serious going into a place? Uh, I believe it does help. I mean, uh, you know, I, I've been around. I don't want to say any bad about people, but when you go into any profession, you know, and I'm not comparing what we do to being a lawyer or a doctor to anything. No, no. I'm just saying those guys dress great. You know, you walk in, you notice that. Uh, when you walk into a lot of independent wrestling shows, you see a lot of sweatpants, button-up pants, T-shirts, ripped-up jeans, and nothing that really stands out. Mm-hmm. And I, I just, I've always, like I said, the dress for success. I've always thought if you walk in and you see a sharp-dressed man or a sharp-dressed woman, you, your eye points to that before anything else, and you know, in a in a business where you don't see a lot of that, I think that help, that has helped me stand out in certain ways. Mm-hmm. Certainly, certainly. So, so we saw over the years in IWC. Um, of course, you were fabulous, John McChesney, first off, and uh, and and uh, kind of evolved into big league. John McChesney, which I, I know is something that we saw more, uh, I think like in Cleveland, I, I saw that you were doing that bit with, uh, I think at the time, maybe Firestorm, uh, before we saw it down oh, here. Oh, I did a lot in play. It originated in AIW Wrestling. Okay. The first and the first ever team Big League member mm-hmm. was Sweet and Sour Larry Sweeney. Oh, wow. Uh, not to bring up, any, yeah, no, it, it was at a, an Absolution show. I don't, I believe it was number three or four. I can't remember. Uh, but the first ever team big league was Sweet and Sour Larry Sweeney and myself. Um, and the name big league kind of came from AIW in a way, uh, you know, that's another story, but I mean, it came from that, that area. Uh, and it morphed into just, you know, it sounded right for how I am. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, you know, <laughs> and, and then it, yes, it did turn into firestorm and the, after Larry Sweeney, the next, Formation Team Big League was myself and Shane Taylor and Sassy Stephanie and Colin to this, and we uh, we ran all over Firestorm Pro Wrestling uh, over there in Cleveland, 
and then after that folded, I kind of brought that attitude and brought that whole aura to myself everywhere I go. So now in PWR, it's big league. In IWC, it's big league. Uh, and anywhere else I wrestle, it's big league now. You know, And you just got to deal with it. Mm-hmm. Hey, we, we talked about also recently. Um, you know, Facade is a guy that I always think like brings like half a half a mall worth of stuff with him uh, for his uh, merch table. But uh, you, you're also kind of a king of merchandising at the indie shows too. <laughs> yes, you have a few of my shirts, don't you? Uh, yeah, I actually wore. I, 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 sir, I wore your uh, your shirt to work yesterday. I did have a button up over it, but in pride, I had I had Big League underneath. Uh, but. Uh, <laughs> see? See? See now, in a, in now, that's that's what I think wrestling is. I think a lot of professional or wrestling, um, and there's a lot of guys that you've probably interviewed on the show that marketing is key and getting your name out there is key. Mm-hmm. And you're not going to get your name out there um, on the independent scene unless you do a lot for yourself. And I believe a lot in hustling for myself. Uh, I you know. I don't have a big marketing machine like WWE or TNA to make my own t-shirts or to do anything for me. Yeah. I have to do it myself. Okay. Right. Nobody's going to, you know, nobody's going to hand you anything in this world. No shit. You work for it and, you know, hustle yourself for it. Uh, and years ago I saw people selling t-shirts and I noticed that, you know, what you got to do to get your name out there and, and this and that and, and how to make extra money because uh, the Lord knows you don't make a ton of money doing this wrestling business and uh, to survive you got to make ends meet somehow and people you know myself when I used to when I was younger when I'd go to an event of any kind wrestling a baseball game a football game uh, a concert you want to have something to remember the night by right Mm -hmm. and so I you know and I would I would always as, as a kid buy whatever I saw I'd walk up to a little merchandise booth and be like, ooh, that's shiny, that looks cool, this looks cool, and I'd buy it. And I didn't care what I spent on it. And being in the entertainment business, I figured, what the hell? I need to do that for myself, and I want people to walk around with my name you know, on their shirt. So then if somebody looks at that shirt and says, that's cool, then they want to buy it too, so on and so forth. So uh, and Facade, I think I did it first, and then Facade in the local area is the next one. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm number one. He's number two. <laughs> well, I, I do remember. I was, I was actually kind of scrambling, looking around, to see if it was floating around the studio here. But I, I remember you were the w- first one that gave us a, a. I saw a beer cozy with your logo on it. Yeah, that is. Yes. Uh, I, now, I know. Well, now, hold, now, now, here's a random one. Here's a random one. Mm-hmm. There, I, in the least this area, because there's wrestling all over, and I'm sure there's guys that have just as much stuff as we do. But. Uh, there, yeah, have you ever heard of Lumberjack LaRue from Oil City? Uh, thanks to the Legends shows up in the Franklin area, yes. Yes. Okay, so it's basically Paul Bunyan right. wrestling. Right. And when you, uh, sorry, you, if you ever came to a PWR show and looked at his merchandise table, he's got myself, he's got facades, he's got even sometimes, I think, the WWE guys, uh, he'll give them a run for his money. Last time I saw him, he had lumberjack LaRue cufflinks, ties, ah. uh, he, <laughs> cummerbunds, cummerbunds, bow ties, uh, lumberjack LaRue shower curtains, of all things. And that's the last thing you want to see. It's, it's a <laughs> big picture. <laughs> and I'm saying he had, he probably had 85 different items with his picture and or name on it. Holy it crap. It was unbelievable. Holy crap. <laughs> Virgil needs to learn from this guy. I tell you what, there's there's there's, yeah, there's oh, a little on, there's, yeah. there's, yeah. don't, 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 we'll, we'll get into Virgil here in a few weeks here, but anyways, uh, there's a shot of yeah, I don't want, I don't want anything to do with that. <laughs> uh, but there's a shot of uh, Lumberjack the Roof for you guys on the video version as well. Um, oh, I forgot. What, oh, cozies and uh, 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 I lost my track there. Lumberjack the Roof threw me off. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, uh, what? Yeah. Okay. But anyways, um, all right. Hey, tell you what. What is uh, so? What are you watching these days? Well, you know, you're involved in a lot of stuff. Uh, you're getting around. Uh, what am I wa- watching? I'm sorry, I, I, I pulled the phone away for a that's, second. That's okay. What? what are you watching in wrestling these days? What's kind of uh, uh, caught your eye? What are you looking out for? What's uh, inspiring you, motivating you? Uh, uh, who's doing some good stuff out there today? Uh, well, I mean, I like it all. Uh, but I, I have a, between my everyday life and, and, and what I do and you know, travel and stuff. I, I've watched mainly WWE and a lot of NXT. I mean, NXT is awesome. Mm-hmm. 
I, I think. Uh, I was a huge, huge ECW fan in high school, and a little cult following and this and that. And I believe NXT is similar to that. Obviously not as hard. Like, I don't even mean hardcore, but like, well, I don't, you know, when you're younger, you, it's, you see something that's different, you just gravitate towards it. And this is different, and I gravitate towards watching that because it is different. Uh, it's not hitting me as hard as the old ECW did, but I mean, a lot of the guys on NXT I've actually been in the ring with uh, before. Uh, you know, from Samoa Joe, I've actually been in the ring with Sami Zayn. I wrestled uh, El Generico up in Toronto mm -hmm. for Kingdom James in a, a union of independent wrestling a tournament. I mean, it was about four or five years ago, but a lot of those guys just, I don't know, it, it's, it's more wrestling and less talk. It's more action and less BS, if you ask me. And yeah. that's what's really catching my eye. So. Awesome. 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 But other uh, than wrestling, have you watched Kung Fury yet? <laughs> no, I have not watched it, but I have the game on my Android tablet. Well, okay. Well, I don't know about the game, but I think you should watch the 30 minute movie. I've seen, I've, I've seen. watched it about 30 times. So, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I've seen the trailers. You know, it's not wrestling, but you should watch it. Right, right. I've seen the trailers for this thing, and I, I definitely need to, need to snag this thing. But uh, it, it's, uh, it's like an 80s style, like, fighter, yeah. like a kickboxer or something, right? Or. It, it, yeah, it's, yeah, but it's the most ridiculous thing you'll ever see. Mm -hmm. well, just when you think you can't get more ridiculous, they think it's something else to throw at you that's just even weirder and stupider but it sounds right up my alley then and uh and, and i think okay. a lot of audience as well so uh we actually have some comments uh real quick i wanted to get to from the chat room a couple people in there first of all uh, uh calling out the uh, that super indie match best in super indie history i believe the part with you and low-key uh from uh e foreign in there uh, i think i've seen his name around the board a bit uh, also, okay. uh, also called out a, a wheel saying he loved the uh, low key versus McChesney match as well. So, and uh, yeah, that's like, what's that? I don't like anything recent. That's like ten years ago. No? <laughs> <laughs> well, Wheels has been uh, uh, busy with something else somewhere else. So uh, down the road. So there's ah. that. So ah, okay. uh, speaking of you being busy, uh, you're actually going to be at Global Force Wrestling's. Uh, well, are these officially baseball events that they're doing up there? Uh, this yeah, it's the great. Well, it's the Grand Slam tour. Yes, and they're uh, they've been traveling around the minor league baseball fields all around the uh, country. I think they've done six of them so far, or so mm -hmm. around there. And uh, they're coming to. They're going to Wisconsin the ninth, Erie the tenth, and then over to Lake County Mentor area, EC 3s hometown of all places oh. on uh, the eleventh. And uh, I don't know. Yeah, they. I, I, I contacted the uh, you know. GFW officials and told them I wanted to, you know, help out and be on the show. And, you know, they said, sure. Uh, a lot of the guys that are involved in GFW, I've known for a long time. And, uh, yeah, they, they decided to put me on. Now, I was supposed to be, they've advertised me versus Sanjay versus J-Man Olivencia. So uh, if you want to come and have a good time at Jarriott Park on Friday night, uh, here in Erie, Pennsylvania, be there at seven thirty sharp because I'm probably going to take both of them down. <laughs> not probably, I am. Awesome, and and definitely Sanjay is a guy that has not left lost a step. If you haven't seen him on TV recently, I've seen him. Uh, uh, he's been in the area oh, as well. Yeah, no. he's, uh, he's, uh, he's the man. I I, I wrestled. You know what? I, it's funny. I wrestled Sanjay back on the Wednesday night uh, pay per views. Oh wow! For TNA, I, yeah. I wrestled him on an I wrestled him on an episode of Explosion, and then. The first ever, I believe it's the first or second ever, TNA member on Fox Sports Net. Yeah. Yeah, when they had the time limits on the middle of the afternoon on Fridays at like <laughs> four. Yes. I, uh, the, it was myself, Fast Eddie, and oh, I can't think of it. Cassidy O'Reilly against Chris Saban, Amazing Red, and Sanjay Dutt. Mm -hmm. Nice. And yeah, so I've been in the ring with him a few times. No, he hasn't lost a step. He's the man, and uh, we'll see how it goes this Friday. But I, it's not it's not the only show I have this weekend. Of course not. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, the next night here in my hometown where I live, I'm defending my PWR title against my Erie Elite partner, Omega Aaron Draven. And Aaron Draven's been all around the place, too. I know you've seen him a bunch of places. Right, right. Am really, I right or wrong? Very impressive. Very impressive guy. And, uh, I think exactly. he's, he's popped up in IWC a couple times as well. Definitely up with Prime Wrestling. And uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's uh, he's pretty good. I'll definitely look up some film for him on YouTube. 
Oh yeah, look him up, uh, and it's gonna be you know that's gonna be that night's gonna be quite the event. That's all I gotta say. If you're looking for some old school kick ass, beat the hell out of each other wrestling. You come Saturday night to PWR uh, Pro Wrestling Rampage on 39th and Washington in Erie, Pennsylvania. Awesome. I've actually had the uh, fortune to attend two shows up there with you guys. Uh, uh, actually, yeah, might... the one, I didn't even know you were coming at the one. I was in the middle of fighting, and I sit on the top rope, and I look out, and there you are. <laughs> well, the, the, I that, you remember that? Yeah, I, I remember that because that was my uh, that was our anniversary trip to Erie, and we ended up at a wrestling yeah. show because we ran into anniversary. We ran into you, our mutual friend Tom uh, at the pier, and he's like, "You know, there's a wrestling show tonight," and I'm like, "I guess we got to go." <laughs> It was your it was your wedding anniversary. Yeah, our wedding anniversary. It was actually our it, ten year a wedding anniversary. See that? See that's the that's the power of Team Big Rig. We attract <laughs> people. <laughs> their their ten year wedding anniversary to, to to one of my matches. Well, well, you you, uh, you know my wife is into wrestling too. You know, and she's at all the shows helping out. So I mean, it was, she was just I'm like, it. come on, I, you know me. I got to give you a hard time about it. <laughs> Um, but that was great. You guys have fun shows up there. I also was at the one we did. We did a weird thing with uh, Prime Wrestling when you guys had the show with Billy Gunn and um, who was the other guy? Bill Gunn. Oh, it? Jerry Lynn. Jerry Lynn. And yeah, yeah. Uh, was Hurricane on that one? No, no. Oh. I'm thinking I mixed them all together. It was Jerry Lynn and Billy Gunn. <laughs> um, a really fun show there, um, and and actually really cool meeting Billy Gunn. I never had a high opinion of Billy Gunn until after I met him. To be quite honest. Um, just seemed like yeah, no, he, he was he was awesome. He, him and Jerry Lynn both uh, worked very hard for mm-hmm. Erie that night. It was pretty cool. That that night, I built, I wrestled Bill Collier in a TLC right. match that night, and he gave me his finishing move off the apron through a through a table on the oh. floor, and I I remember I almost bit my tongue off. I remember that because yeah. I remember you came came up and you were still bleeding from the from the mouth, and I asked you you know how you're. T- <laughs> and you're looking for ice. You're asking me for ice. I'm like, I'm running a camera. I have no idea. Uh, so, yeah, well, hey, um, you're supposed to drop the camera and get me ice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the PWR rules up there. It's your hometown. They didn't. They didn't fill me in on uh, it. <laughs> uh, no, okay, that's all good, man. All right, uh, but no, go check that out. Uh, Pro Wrestling Rampage. I know they're on Facebook. I don't know. Do they have a .com people can go to too? Or uh, no, we we did at one point. Uh, I would just mm-hmm. say check their check their. Uh, facebook page for now um and you know they're working on another website we had one at one point it's not up at the moment but like i said um out of this whole weekend saturday night's going to be the place to come see them i mean the whole night the whole weekend friday is going to be great at gfw and i'm, I'm thankful for the opportunity mm-hmm. uh mm-hmm. but saturday night if you really want to see some old-fashioned kick-ass wrestling you come awesome. to that one that's awesome looks like some other friends of the show like i say bo collar has been i know i've been popping up down here in uh, iwc lately uh asylum's on there that we talked to you on the show several months ago uh so if you, you definitely if you're up in that area worth it you got a good weekend of wrestling going on in general um so oh, yeah and we haven't seen you in iwc for a bit uh hopefully we see you back no, uh, sooner you or haven't. later you haven't because uh you know at the beginning of, I, I wrestled matt hardy last december right and uh, and he beat me, and at the end of the night, and you know, at the same time, that was the same night Justin Plummer took over IWC, and and uh, Chuck Roberts that night before he gave the company to, to, to Plummer, um, he gave me one of the most memorable moments I'll ever have in my entire career, no matter what I've done before or what I will do. Uh, that night, Chuck handed me the IWC title, the old title, the yeah. the um, you know the the custom made international wrestling cartel heavyweight title. And I'm, and as I'm talking to you right now, I'm looking at it. I have it in a glass case on my wall. It's not a lot of times in independent wrestling that you get to keep something that you worked very hard for. Okay. And, and every, and I'm going to get a little bit serious here because the IWC means a lot to me. Um, PWR in, in Erie, Pennsylvania is where I'm from, but IWC made me who I am. And, and in the last few, you know, I worked with Justin Labar for almost a year and a half. And the way he did me wrong uh, really, really, really pisses me off. And, you know, I know he does wrestle zone. I know he does chair shot. I know he's got a lot of connections. But I don't care. I'll slap him in the face next time I see him because of what, what he's done to me. He's made it a fact, a point, that I haven't been able to be at the last few IWC shows. Uh, so I... I the ten year anniversary of me we talked about Super Indy. I the ten year anniversary of me being at Super Indy was this past Super Indy. And guess oh, wow. who wasn't there? Oh wow. 
I wasn't there. Yeah. I mean, it, it, you know, it was the 10 year anniversary. Granted, it was 10 years ago, but like, it's kind of a, you know, we just said that was the match that night that launched my career. Uh, and now Labar has his lawyers and attorneys keeping me away. And, I, you know, of all people, I've actually talked to Jimmy Nuts a few times lately. And, we, you know, he's been discussing to me about him sending uh, that Wardlow or Wardlow or Ward, whatever his, you know, name is. And big time, you know, Labar's been sending them after him. And it's only a matter of time, so is all I'm saying is that the next time I get to IWC, um, I'm going to whoop somebody bad. And the only thing on my mind as I look at the old IWC title is the new IWC title. And I know Tommy Dreamer holds it right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, if I'm not, you know, Tommy Dreamer holds it. And I know he's going against Rhino uh, in August, on August 22nd. He's right, you know, Dreamer, Rhino in a cage. And I don't know if I'm going to be there or not. But if I am, you bet your ass that I'm coming after Le- Team Labar and my sights are set after Labar on that title. And I don't care who's going to stop me or try to get me. And I know I'm getting a little bit serious about this, but the IWC means a lot to me, more than anybody knows. And the fact that I haven't been there for the first part of 2015 really, really upsets me. And uh, I just want the IWC fans to know that it's coming. Don't know when, but you will see me again. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, sorry, I'm sorry. I got a little serious. Man. It's all right, man. It's all right, man. Uh, we're calling it calling out in the chat, and, and they're saying that that was a great moment when uh, you were handed the title, of course. Um, it, it was really oh, cool. Oh, yeah. No, I, I can feel, like I said, I wish, mm-hmm. I, I wish I was on a video with you guys because I'd show you where it is. You know, it's, mm-hmm. it, 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 it means something to me a lot. So. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and there was actually a question. There's actually a question coming from that. How do you feel about Plummer so far in, in his dealings, uh, you know, after taking over for Chuck? Oh man. Well, I will say it's a lot different. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I, there, you know, I, I start, I was with Norm from almost the beginning, not quite the beginning, but almost the beginning. Mm-hmm. And I was with Chuck through the whole thing. Chuck didn't always believe in me, but, uh, at the end I noticed that he really did. Uh, and Plummer, if you want me to be candid, he's got a lot of growing pains to, mm-hmm. to go through. Of course. Um, a lot of people give him a lot of crap. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the one thing I will say, uh, b- besides it all, the IWC has been around for a long time. Uh, and there's a lot of independent wrestling all over the country. But Justin did believe in what was established before him. And he might not always have the best ideas. He might not always make the right decision. But he believed in something that was established and just busting his butt to keep it going. Um, and, you know, no matter what anybody says, even though they give him a hard time, at least he's trying because he's got the balls that a lot of people don't to at least try. Okay. And, you know, <clears throat> I give him that credit. Chuck and I always, didn't always see eye to eye, and I'm sure Plummer and I won't always see eye to eye. I haven't had much contact with him thanks to Labar and his, you know, group getting me away from the whole thing. But uh, I don't know. I wish Plummer the best of luck, and I'm here for him, you know, when it happens. Awesome, awesome. Can't wait to see you down here again. Uh, real quick, we got one question to end things off, to cap things off. I think you touched on a lot of things, both sides of it. But uh, what is uh, the best and the worst thing about indie wrestling in your long career here? The best things are the people that I've met, the times that I've had, uh, uh, the, the, the people I've met, the times that I've had, the things that I've experienced, uh, and I wouldn't trade them for the world. At times, uh, financial hardships are the worst. Mm-hmm. But I would take all those because every life experience that I've had, I have no regrets of, and I love every second of what I've done for the last 14 years. Awesome. No matter how hard it is. I could have been a lot further in my own career, but I'm not. Uh, and that's, you know, that's here nor there. Um, that's opportunities I may have screwed up or that I haven't taken advantage of yet, but I don't regret one thing and I love what, what independent wrestling is. Awesome. John McChesley, can't wait to see you back in the IWC in the area. Everybody check them out, uh, especially in Erie for Global Force and uh, Pro Wrestling Rampage. Some great stuff up there. And uh, follow all that stuff online uh, for more information on that. Uh, Twitter, where can people find you online? Uh, Twitter, at Big League JMCC. 
uh, and Facebook, just under John McChesney. That, that's where I'm at. Insta- Instagram, uh, Big League JMCC. All of them. Check them out. Follow it. Have fun with it. Let's 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 make Team Big League bigger than they already are. There you go. Make it make it grow. Thanks a lot, John. And with that, we're going to talk some more indie wrestling. But first, look at everything else going on last week in Sorgatron Media. All right, man. That was awesome. That was great stuff. Yeah, I think Sawtooth have an intoin in the Pittsburgh Underground. Sorgatron here. Since you ain't come down to visit, since you ain't going to snort no cat dander with Sawtooth, Sawtooth needs assistance in other ways. This is my first Gateway 2000. Wow. 36, 33 dx um, I had the math coprocessor. But if you go to analytics.pinterest.com, log into your account, you can see this amazing dashboard. It, it kind of reminds me a bit of uh, what you get for insight on pages. What's happening is Red Bull is teaming up with, with Activision for Destiny, creating a, a DLC for the game. Uh, does, so, does it give you wings? No. <laughs> Actually, it might. Who Last knows? Last night I went to Dependable Drive-In, which is a place that I've heard about probably for about a decade at this point, and for whatever reason, just never made it to. But yeah, air sex is the greatest sporting spectacle in the world. So it started off as like a small idea, uh, like a parody of an air guitar show, and it just grew from there. It just snowballed. It was because we saw an opportunity to grow a project. We were like, let's ride this thing and see how it goes. Oh uh, no, my camera has the uh, the follow my face feature and even though I'm sitting <laughs> still, it thinks I'm not. <laughs> it just did it. <laughs> I'll fix this manually, sort. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> oh, it didn't follow Ooh, your face that time. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> All right. It's a Wrestling there Mayhem we show that? where we what don't understand uh, technology here. Uh, Chachi Plays for Kids is coming back again. The 24 hour Game Athon for Youth Arts Program in Pittsburgh. August 7th and 8th at the Tunesium or join us live. ChachiPlays.com. Find out how you can make a difference to and donate today. ChachiPlays.com. Up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B A, B A, start. Fun times happening everywhere at SorgatronMedia.com. Check out all the shows if you like technology, video games, or other wrestling talk that's not independent. But we're independent and proud. So, Eamon, I got an experience coming up. I got an experience coming up. I I think we've mentioned this passingly on the show, and I've talked with you about this. Now, Now, we... I have never been to an absolute intense wrestling show. Yet, I have a lot of experiences around AIW. (laughs) <laughs> uh be it uh, uh editing footage for some promo packages for for some friends of the show uh uh we uh, you and i actually had a very close brush with aiw because we attended the chikara doubleheader show which was actually before an absolution a few years ago yep which was the famous so it would be around this time it was this time ish yeah whenever daniel bryan choked the guy with a tie um yeah because he was there at, at, at both shows and we, of course, we didn't go to IW because we had to get back to Pittsburgh. We went for Chikara, and like that's the thing coming to town, so we checked it out. And I always said I need to get up to the IW. Our friend Pedro's up there, at least momentarily. Uh, a lot of friends of the show up there. A lot of they just do a lot of really cool things. They have a lot of great people coming in, and, and just get a lot of attention. And they're doing good stuff. I, they're definitely one that I keep an eye on, generally, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, this Friday, I will be attending my first show with them, uh, Absolution Ten. <laughs> so 10 years I've been missing you guys I'm sorry about that um, <laughs> I actually Dutters of all people said uh, yeah we're going this there, she found a flyer with Samoa Joe and Bader on it and it's like yeah let's go yeah that's like, kind of it <laughs> I'm like sure and next thing I know I have tickets uh, but anyways this is my first time looking at the card <laughs> <laughs> oh god so so um, and you can check them out AIWrestling.com. They're definitely again like oh that's that's the guy that was here before. Uh, he's not on anymore. Uh, but uh, like I said a lot of familiar faces, a lot of familiar names. I know a lot of people. I'm really pleased to be seeing down here in IWC. Um, you know, including uh, you know we talked about Josh Singh in here uh, in this one tag match, and uh, I think I think Alice Daniels is up here typically too. I don't I haven't spotted him on the card just yet. Tim Donst did Tim Donst just 
Like he just had some serious stuff wrong with him, didn't he? Yeah, that, he, that's he, a weird he actually way to just say. he announced at their last event that he is officially cancer free. Nice, uh, uh, which is great for him, and, is, and this will be his first match back, I believe, mm-hmm. uh, against Nick Gage of all people. Now, who, CZW oh. recently released from prison, Nick Gage. <laughs> Wait, so, yeah. like for real? <laughs> like he's running with that? <laughs> like, no, no, like for real prison? Like, oh no! Yeah. For uh, robbing a bank, his you know, per- just for robbing happens. a bank, that is legit. Like, is New Jack that serious? <laughs> well, you know, but uh, yeah, that that'll be uh, interesting. All <laughs> right, all right. Well, I notice he's flipping us off in the promo picture, so there's that. Uh, Davey Vegas, I'm like, who's been on the show? What are, what are your boys? Love down me there? some Davey Vega. Yeah, yeah. So I get to see some Davey Vega in person, taking on BG Whitmer of all people. So I'm like, I've got to experience a person down here at RWA. Uh, uh, Ricky Shane Page, Josh Alexander. I, and I, believe, I believe we'll be for the main event for, for the, main the event. Uh, absolute title. And dudes on TV in a Cleveland Street fight, which now includes, we talked about these guys before, but the team now includes DJ Z, EC3, Ethan, Ethan Carter, um, who was frequented under another name in AIW long before he was even in, in WWE, uh, Matt Cross, who looks strangely like uh, uh, oh, what's he called in there? Uh, what's his looks like a dude by the name of Son of Havoc. Son uh, of Havoc look, looks. He looks like one third of the Lucha Underground trio champions. <laughs> that too, Ray Rowe and Samoa Joe, on one team. Yep. This has to. And the other side is the Young Bucks. Alex Daniels, there he is. He is on here. Uh, Johnny Gargano and Josh Prohibition for Team AIW. That alone is one the most ridiculous tag match I've seen on an indie show uh, right. of a collection of people that are significant other places. I, I mean, is that, is that accurate? <laughs> no, no, absolutely. Uh, uh, no pun intended, but no, uh, yeah, that, that, that's going to be absolutely killer. I think, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, there's a lot of really good stuff. I think on that card, obviously it's their big sort of, you know, uh, their big show of the year. So I think it's, uh, they really deliver it, especially if it's their tenth tenth uh, annual uh, show. So definitely, um, I know there's that. Uh, I definitely also think you should check out the uh, uh, the AIW tag title match with uh, uh, Cheech and Colin Delaney, another friend of the show, mm-hmm. uh, taking on uh, uh, if you've never seen them, uh, Tyson Dukes and uh, Hot Sauce Tracy Williams. I think uh, I've ac- I think I've accidentally tweeted Tyson Dukes because I think I keep like I, I I switched his name up with Tyson Kidd a lot on That'll my Twitter. Happen, yeah. So sorry, Tyson Canadian Dukes. Too, I can so apologize can... in person. So. Yeah. <laughs> that and uh, also I know the AIW women's title match between Athena and Veda Scott, which should be great. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, the, all around this looks like a really, really yeah, good card. I, okay, there's just like some tremendous names buried in giant matches. Yeah, and also Vader's there. And, well, like, and, Vader, and by the way, Vader's going to be around and he's going to squash somebody. It's, he's just going to kill somebody. Um, he might just destroy the women's match. Who knows? Because they do no that problem. up there. Uh, but 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 this is a six way scramble. Chris Saban, Tyler Thomas. I don't. Oh, I believe he's actually. Who I I actually believe Saban's out of that because I believe he's injured. Oh okay, but um, but still okay. It, it's still not yeah. done. Tyler Thomas. I'm not familiar with, but I will be. I uh, uh, believe he's from the ca- Canada area. Uh, of course, for, I can uh, count on you. Of course, I can well, count on you for this. I mean, I, <laughs> I'm trying yeah, to. Yeah. I'm just letting these names sink in for people. Candice LeRae, yes, there's a lady in this, and this is not new. This, this happens with her. Uh, uh, Cedric Alexander, uh, Flip Kendrick, Lewis Linden, who, by the way, were a great tag team together. Uh, oh, I can't remember what they're. Afro. Uh, Aeroform. Aeroform. Wow. One of them had an Afro. One of them yeah. had an Afro. That was the connection, and there you go. Um, yeah. it, absolutely. <laughs> no, nothing, nothing Sork said was, should be taken in any of Eddie that. Kingston. Eddie Kingston is still around and has a beard. This uh, this is... I'm just discovering a lot of things, and he's taken on Ethan Ethan Page. Jeez. In an I Quit match, I think? Jeez, I, in an I Quit match. Okay, it's AIW. Uh, they're... they're they are insane because uh, they book insane and they have uh, uh, some great talent up there. And I wanted to get to uh, experience it. Uh, never have I seen an indie show with a $30 front row ticket uh, that wasn't maybe Chikara. And uh, mm. this looks very deserving for this one uh, up there in uh, Cleveland, Ohio, AIWrestling.com if you want information on that. And, of course, they got a great video thing going on. I mean, they're, they're really tied in with Smart Mark, and they have on-demand and everything like that. And uh, and uh, they're, really, they're really doing something really cool up there. 
So great web design, by the way. Mm -hmm. Just had to <laughs> hit up a buddy on that one. But that's anyways, the, the Sork side coming out there, huh? That, that, that's the uh, that's the Sork side coming out on that. I would oh. say the the appreciation of those kind of aesthetics. No, and 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 the person doing it, he he doesn't get enough yeah. credit. He doesn't get enough credit. But I won't say his <laughs> name on here. We should actually. I got something for off the show. Oh, uh, so you got something going on in Texas? <laughs> yeah, I do want to. I do want to plug well, two things really. Uh, uh, you, you mentioned Samoa Joe uh, uh, being on AIW. He's also going to be on an event in Texas Saturday in San Antonio for uh, AIWF Texas, I believe is the promotion. Uh, a wrestling a friend of the show, Keith Lee. Uh, and if mm -hmm. you've never seen Keith Lee uh, and you know who Samoa Joe is, that's going to be <laughs> special. Um, uh, we, 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 Keith Lee. Okay, I remember the Keith Lee. Yeah, Keith that's Lee, he's be, actually current uh, Inspire Pro PR Perceived Champion. That's going to be a very uh, smash mouth match, isn't it? That's going to be mm, really crazy. Mm. Uh, so definitely check that out. I also do want to plug an event that's happening uh, the night after that uh, on Sunday, uh, the 12th, in excuse me, Pasadena, Texas. Uh, uh, a show for uh, our uh, good friends of mine, uh, Lone Star Champions of Wrestling. Uh, they're holding their Bustin' for Autism event, which is a... Uh, uh, Obviously, uh, uh, a show that will also uh, aid towards uh, autism uh, research and stuff like that. Uh, I don't have the exact details, but I'll, I'll have to look that up. Uh, this one is also a really stat card. Uh, Alberto Del Rio, uh, currently Alberto Patron. Uh, Tommy Dreamer versus Lance Hoyt will be happening. Uh, Joey Ryan, Candice LeRae. There's a, a three-way women's match with Barbie Hayden, Candice LeRae, and Eva Elise, which should be amazing. Uh, Hacksaw Jim Duggan's there Scott Norton uh, yeah there's a ton of really cool uh, uh, talented people on that show uh, so I encourage you to go check them out that's at the Pasadena Convention Center uh, and that is going to be uh, on July 12th uh, in Pasadena Texas uh, for more information go uh, follow them LoneStarChampionshipWrestling.com uh, go support them awesome awesome great indie wrestling wherever you're at and i, I don't know if there's any in Pittsburgh, to be honest. I haven't, I haven't looked. I would like to be honest. Oh, there's no indie wrestling this weekend because WWE's in town and everybody moved their show. Yes. So there's that. So <laughs> as you'll do. Um, well, you know, hey, you know what? I got a side conversation. If you want to touch base on this. Okay. Um, so two wrestling shows here in Pittsburgh are happening uh, in August uh, on the same night. And I noticed that something came up on that same date in August. And I wanted your opinion on this. And I wonder if this is okay. a problem. Obviously, WWE comes downtown in console arena, even for a house show. You don't compete. There's just, you don't bother, right? Yeah. I mean, especially, you know, one was a smaller show. You're going to have 10 people at that point. They're going to go see WWE. That's who your audience is. What about if they put an NXT special the night of your show? We all know already. We all know already. <laughs> we know already you don't compete with a pay-per-view, right? Yeah. But what if they drop an NXT special that night? Strangely, somebody who's recently been very special featured on NXT is booked for that night. Hmm. That's interesting. That's your conundrum. I'm not a promoter. I just know a few. But what do you do other than cry? <laughs> other than cry. <laughs> because I think of anything, at least the, uh, when it comes to one side of things, I think that's when you assess your fan base. I think the one group is going to be okay. Because I think the group that watches the one group does not have WWE Network. And this is not competition. Versus the mm -hmm. other group... That's your. We dropped a lot of NXT names tonight, didn't we? Um, <laughs> so, I and it's their first main one in Brooklyn. And if this becomes a Saturday night special thing that's regular, this is a concern. And they don't announce these things very readily in advance. Not very on time. Watch them happen in Austin, Texas on the night Inspire Pro shows. I'm looking. You're in that's Texas right. Anyway. Holy crap! You got you got blasted by a freaking like pretty much a pay per view. Yep. Wait, did we ever? Did we? 
uh, officially talk about like what that did you see a drop from that or anything? We didn't actually. We we did perfectly fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 It, it, I don't think it was a big problem because it was. I mean, from where it was, it was four hours away. So it's you know it's yeah. not too big of a problem. Right. Right. But but, uh, but but not even the people need to go watch it so they're not going to your show. I think they're more no, passionate. No, no, no. They're more passionate about your show. You you have a very I can tell that fan base is into it, right? Yeah. So. But I don't, yeah, well, we'll say, and I know we were kind of loosely going over it. I don't think Ring of Honor consciously decided to book against this. Uh, oh, yeah, I did. Yeah. Ring of Honor, too, right? Because they were. They oh, were, you weren't talking about Ring of Honor. I wasn't even, no, I wasn't talking, I was talking about an indie show. Oh, really? I'm talking about, okay, IWC and RWA are the same night. Is what oh, I'm wow. talking about. Cage Fury with Rhino versus Tommy Dreamer is the same night. Oh wow! That's right. what I'm talking about. And oh, I didn't even geez. think about. Rig- I saw the headline and I'm just like, oh whatever. That'll probably anti program there. I, is that an eye pay per view or what is it? The, the the well, the Ring of Honor shows their Field of Honor show. Okay. Uh, that's happening in Brooklyn. On oh the no! Same night in oh the same wow! Time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? That, that's kind of messed up. That yeah. that is that is that it. Okay, that might be something. <laughs> yeah. Especially, I mean, flat out, NST is a direct rival to Ring of Honor. Oh yeah. You you can't deny that. You really can't deny that. I will say, with some of the matches that Ring of Honor just announced for that show, they are kind of like, I I think they're competing in a sense mm-hmm. and 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 you can't like, they're, they're really good matches they just announced you really yeah. can't not compete at that point yeah so. it's kind of like we got to bust out the big guns because you know um but yeah i i conundrum especially i mean in that case now with like nxt like or WWE in general just announcing a show like such short notice mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know and being like hey this is happening um, yeah, I, I, it's a frustrating thing. And it's a thing you have to deal with as a, as an indie wrestling mm-hmm. promotion. Well, and, and it's uh, not, and it's not just that. I mean, I've seen, I've seen IWC and RWA shows just completely flattened because of playoffs for hockey, for instance, yeah. or, 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 or well, you obviously don't compete with the Steelers, right? Uh, but which yeah. is a little easier if you're having Saturday night, you know, there's no Saturday night football typically, right? But say, I think there was some event, uh, that inspired the where he went against the uh, NBA Finals, right. uh, whatever was the last game of the NBA Finals with the Spurs, so that kind wow. of yeah yeah yeah, that's, yeah. So I mean, but you and you see that and you and you see the effect on that and you can't as a promoter, I would imagine you can't just be like, well, nope, we'll just move it. You know, I mean, between the building, et cetera, et cetera, license, da 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 da. da you know, I, I mean, there's there's the things that I'm not even considering that you have to deal with it, to to move something like that. Um, or cancel, or whatever the case may be, uh, as, as both promotions have dealt with this year for one reason or another. Um, yeah. So I, it, it's an interesting conundrum. And, and He's I think, got to cry or pray. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> cry or pray. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you know what? To be fair, to be fair, anybody sitting there can also be watching the WWE Network on their phone. In the That's front true. Does, so does, does, if they're really I, concerned I about it. These venues have great Wi-Fi. No, it will sell service at least in the one. So that's yeah. Sorry, I just saw the cat do a backflip off camera. So I got that's <laughs> he gets weird here at night. Uh, but anyways, anyways, as my wife is sending me pictures of downtown Pittsburgh from the plane that's flying in, which means I should sign off very soon. I'm not getting her. Don't don't. I got somebody else is doing that. So. <laughs> We're busy. <laughs> we're busy podcasting over here. No, we're going to be talking to you guys. We're going to wait. We're going to see my wife that I haven't seen for a week. Can wait. Thank <laughs> God she doesn't listen to these things. Anyways, think, hey, let us know what you th- think about uh, uh, the NXT situation. Um, you know, uh, these shows coming out. Absolution. Are you an Absolution uh, a follower? That sounds weird. Uh, what am I going to uh, check out? What am I going to expect here? I think I got floor seats because last I knew they were like a couple away from standing room only when they got when she picked them up like three weeks ago, three or four yeah. weeks ago. I, I can't remember when, she, when the hell she got them. But uh, it's going to be fun. I'll, of course, report back. You'll get the tweets and such from me. It'll be weird because I'll know half the people on the show. Uh, but uh, that's, it's always strange for me. 
But uh, I get to see Pedro again, too, and that's great as well. So, hey, Pedro. Hey. So with that, Eamon, so great talking with you, talking to wrestling. Thank you so much for joining with me. you, Sorg. Thank you, sir. Thank you, John McChesney. Please uh, go check him out as I bring up the graphic to remember. Big League JMCC <laughs> on the Twitter. Is follow him on the Instagram, the Facebooks as well. Uh, great stuff there. A really cool guy, and I hope you guys get to experience him soon. Touchdown! My wife just touched down. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> thank you, and please support indie wrestling. I didn't know sign off. I, I didn't know. I don't know. I've been loose with it lately. I just don't. Yeah. Joe is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast and have more at SorgatronMedia.com. Hi everyone. Do you like video games? Do you like reading about video games? Do you like listening to podcasts about video games? Why don't you check out InsertCoinToBegin.com? New articles going up daily, and you can check out our podcast, Boss Battle, on SorgatronMedia.com. <laughs>